Good evening and welcome to VSB TV 11. I'm Celia Mead on this Monday, July the 7th. And our top story tonight, well-known fisherman and former PLP candidate and staunch environmentalist Danny Ferris is outraged at the dangerous debris that callous partygoers left on John Smith's Bay Beach this weekend. After spending two hours clearing the remains of a beach fire that had been fueled with pallets, Mr. Ferris called VSB News and invited us to take a look at what he found. Someone must have had a beach party here on, on Saturday night because the cinders, when I dug it up, were still hot. And uh, the amount of uh, anchor fast nails that are in those uh, pellets that they use um, is a, a, a horrible. I mean, there's a, a mess of them that I have that you take, take a, a, a picture, picture of, yeah. And for a child or a mother or a father or, or or a tourist or any, or anyone that's, you know, living in Bermuda or, or working in Bermuda and go through something like that, it, 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 it's not called for. It's terrible. It's worse than careless, isn't it? Oh, it's worse, yeah. Terrible. Yeah. What's it's your, criminal. What's your advice to people who want to party? Well, use uh, ordinary wood. I mean, there's plenty of uh, scrap wood in Bermuda without using pallets that are loaded down with anchor fast nails. And... Uh, just use the discretion. Just love Bermuda like like you should love Bermuda, and take care of it. And take it away. Yeah. And when you leave, everything is clean, and you have nothing to think about. You won't have anybody like myself or anybody else, you know, going through the media so they they can be educated and 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 care more. It, it, it's 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 horrendous. It's terrible. I mean, this is a public beach. It's a family beach, as you see. Weekends, it's fa families that gather here from around the area, uh, and and. For them to get to be subjected to something like that, there are the people are in the area that do that and think nothing of it, and they should be, you know, more uh, be made to, uh, accountable. Mr. Ferris was also concerned at the condition of the eroded cliffside at John Smith Bay, which he had been watching with increasing concern since Hurricane Fabian. Well, if you look just to the east of us here, you'll see that uh, it's eroded even more because I've been watching for some time, especially after uh, uh, Hurricane Fabian. Uh, and there was a party there the other day for a young young child. Uh, they had a big stream up the happy birthday and what have you. Uh, and I saw the parent up underneath the cliff there digging a hole in, in the sand. What a horrible thing it would have been if that cliff came down and took the father on a child's birthday. You know, and I, the other thing I have to sing praise for is, is I see school teachers bringing down uh, the children to the beach here, I've noticed that the teachers advise the school children uh, not to go up underneath the cliff, and they don't go underneath so the cliff. They're being intelligent. Well, yeah, they're being educated in a proper way. An agreement that will promote scientific exploration within Bermuda schools has been signed between the National Aeronautics and Space Administration and the Ministry of Education and Economic Development. The five-year program was initiated by NASA when it decided to establish a temporary space flight tracking station at Cooper's Island in 2012. And Education Minister Dr. Grant Gibbons told Parliament that it would bring local students and teachers in touch with the global environment. Prior to Bermuda's signing of the agreement, the rate of participation was at 112 countries, and there are over 66,000 globe-trained teachers representing more than 24,000 schools around the world. To date, over 10 million students have taken over 100 million measurements, which are now part of the GLOBE database. Mr. Speaker, the GLOBE program has benefits for both students and teachers. Teachers will participate in a world-class professional development provided by NASA and will receive continuing support by the GLOBE Help Desk. They will also be in contact with scientists, teachers, and students from the GLOBE Partner Network, which includes other participating countries, schools, and universities. Other signatories to the GLOBE Agreement include Australia, the Bahamas, Cameroon, Canada, China, India, Germany, and of course the United States. Under the guidance of NASA and our teachers, an inquiry-based approach to practical and real science will be used. Our students will ask questions and make observations about the environment. They'll design investigations and take environmental measurements in their own local environment. They will use GLOBE measurement protocols, take measurements, report their observations, use tools on the GLOBE website, analyze data, and present and publish the results of their analyses. They will also get to work with other GLOBE scientists and students from around the world. Mr. Speaker, following the signing of the GLOBE agreement, the program will be rolled out in the coming year in selected primary and middle schools with a view to expanding the program to more and more schools over time. 
In all cases, at schools and the department, existing staff will be used to implement and support the GLOW program. The GLOW program complements the inquiry-based approach of our Cambridge Science curriculum. It will help provide a significant resource to teachers and give students the opportunity to be part of the larger science community and to participate, explore, and better understand the world of science in their own local environment. There will be a wealth of opportunity for Bermudian fashion designers to gain inspiration from this week's City Fashion Festival, especially tomorrow's presentation at Fort Hamilton. Shiana Torini, international liaison for the festival, sees pluses for local designers. The great thing about Anna Laub, who's the designer of PRISM, is that she's young, she's just building her brand. It's established a bit, but she is still growing it. So she's an inspiration for local designers just as a person. She's very relatable, and she gets a lot of her inspiration from her environment. She's a swimmer designer. Bermuda has the best beaches. So we are hoping that she can get a little bit of inspiration from our surroundings, and that's a lesson for local designers. You don't always have to look outside of Bermuda and overseas to be able to be creative, and you have to pull from where you are and what you're doing right now. She can show them that. Will some of the colors of Bermuda be inculcated in the, in the designs? I hope she will use that for her next collections. She does have some of our like bright pinks and greens, but she definitely could get a lot more from the colors of our houses, our water, the sky. But she works a lot with prints, leopard prints, whites, and blacks. So I hope that she can draw from all of the beautiful colors that we have here. Fast forward to when the fashion show is over. Can a local designer look to establish some international notoriety? As far as the event that's on Thursday, which features all of our local up-and-coming designers, 100%. They've been paired with international mentors from magazines like Elle, Cosmopolitan, um, Complex, Interview. And so we hope that those partnerships continue after this week, and it's not just a one-time thing. And it those relationships are there for the Bermudian designers to build upon. Still ahead, we have the weather preview with Shay Barker. Hey, thanks, Selena. Let's take a look at the Doppler radar. Well, not much going on at all right now. Everybody's waiting for the World Cup, even the weather. Uh, I'll have more coming up a little bit later. The weather radar picture provided courtesy of the Ministry of Transport on VSB TV 11. We live in a beautiful environment. One way to help keep it that way is to always remember your reusable grocery bag. If you forgot, you can still do your part in saving our planet by buying a Marketplace green bag for only $1.19. Not only are they good for groceries, but they're handy for many other uses. Always have your bags in sight of you or put your grocery list in one so that you don't forget your reusable bags. You and the Marketplace are helping to save the environment by choosing to reuse. Life on Logic TV is that much better. Logic TV bundles include Internet Plus Access, High Definition TV, and Home Phone. Starting at $179 with a free install. LOL. Enjoy Life on Logic TV. A gentle reminder from the Office of the Tax Commissioner. It's tax time again. Taxpayers are reminded that payroll tax returns and corporate service tax returns for the quarter ending 30th of June 2014 are due on or before Tuesday 15th of July 2014. Hotel occupancy tax returns for the month ended 30th of June 2014 are also due on or before Tuesday 15th of July 2014. Full payment must accompany returns, otherwise penalties will apply. Taxpayers who are currently eligible for payroll tax relief under the retail, restaurant or hotel concessions must also file completed returns on or before the deadline. For more information, www.taxbermuda.gov.bm or call 297-7807, 297-7750 or 297-7751. Making your taxes a little less taxing.
Welcome back to VSV TV 11. The WOW television service has been suffering power outages over the weekend, which has led to the company CEO Stanley Wright deciding to only restore part of the network to avoid further network outages. This afternoon, Mr. Wright announced that the power fault responsible for the network failure is being worked on, and it was anticipated that all pre-wiring work would be completed by Tuesday afternoon. However, it will be necessary to power down the network for about 90 minutes. The company wants to make it clear that this is powering down will not, I repeat, will not take place during the World Cup match scheduled for 5 o'clock tomorrow. However, another night of partial programming is going to be necessary tonight, and customers have been reassured that they will receive a credit for the outage period. In other news, the excitement of Cup Match will soon be sweeping the island, and the Family Center, once again sponsored by Clarion Bank, is once again providing Somerset and St. George's fans with their traditional Cup Match ribbons. As they have been doing for 19 years, the important fundraising tag day that climaxes this drive takes place on Wednesday, July the 30th at various locations around the island. Executive Director Martha Dismont says that although tag day is a fundraiser, it was also an opportunity to remind the community of the urgent needs that families and children are facing in Bermuda. Family Center, she said, provides support to close to 900 families in 2013 and is preventing problems through its work in the community by building a foundation of strong families. Now let's take a look at the daily markets presented by Bias. Here's a look at the daily markets presented by Bias. The U.S. dollar eased and global equity markets fell today after a surprise drop in German industrial output and as investors turned to corporate earnings for the second quarter. In the U.S., North American indices dropped as investors hesitated to make big bets before the dawn of earnings season. The Nasdaq fell 0.82% to 4,449. The S&P 500 declined 0.44% to 1,977. Bank of N.T. Butterfield was unchanged on the day with 1,556 shares trading hands. LOM Holdings dropped 6.67% to $2.10 with 21,050 shares trading hands. European indices retreated as investors assessed equity valuations following the biggest rally since March. The French CAC declined 1.41% to 4,406. The Milan IB decreased 1.33% to 21,273. Pacific Rim indices were mixed on the day. Most Chinese stocks fell as technology and small company shares dropped on concern that earnings will disappoint. The Nikkei dropped 0.37% to 15,379 as energy explorer companies tumbled. Latin American indices declined on the day. Brazil's Vespa slid as pulp makers follow commodities lower. Chile's IGPA dropped 0.18% to 18,891. Longer-term U.S. Treasury prices rose, pushing 10- and 30-year yield lower amid speculation and uptick in inflation and acceleration in the U.S. job market won't be enough to pressure the Fed into raising rates soon. The U.S. dollar fell the most against the Japanese yen as investors gauged the timing of the Federal Reserve interest rate increases after reports showing a strengthening jobs market. The Canadian dollar declined versus the U.S. dollar by 0.21%. That was a look at the daily markets presented by Bias. People and Places are up next after the break. Price Right on Mill Reach offers you warehouse shopping for bulk and value price groceries, frozen foods and health and beauty items, home furnishings dinnerware and carpets for your bedroom, bathroom, and kitchen. Bikes, toys, and activity sets for kids, teens, and tweens. Electronics and home and audio-visual accessories. Visit Price Right. Always something new and always something for everyone. Open 8 to 8, Monday through Saturday, 9 to 7 p.m. on Sundays. Are you frustrated and confused by complex online banking systems? The quickest, easiest way to pay bills is with EasyPay. They're very good. They're excellent. Um, I'd recommend them all the time. 
Easy Pay is the easy way. The whole reason I joined Easy Pay is because of what the name stands for. It's very easy to pay. I've been using Easy Pay for over 10 years. It really is an easy product to use. Bill payment doesn't get any easier than Easy Pay. Email Dal at easypay.bm or visit easypay.bm. People and Places is next with Charles Webb. People and Places with Charles Webb is brought to you by Big Saving Zone at the end of Stocks Road, St. David's. The current exhibition at the Bermuda Society of Arts is on the acute care wing of the hospital. But one of the unique aspects of this exhibition are the people who made up the old King Edward Hospital. Milton Hill, who worked there starting in 1963, shares with me a conversation about the people that were the genesis of what we now have as the new acute care wing. It, it's a treat to see people from the community that we grew up with uh, interacting in, in uh, the medical field. Everybody was either wanted to get educated in nursing or doctoring or lawyer. Everybody, education was the thing back then. I mean, you remember the days when we had people like Jimmy Doc on the ambulance and Graham Bell, right. but now we have EMTs. Do you think they have the same character? No, it, it's it, it's 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 professional, but it's not it's not um, um, how would I say it? Um, there was a, a camaraderie. Yes, a camaraderie. Yeah, yeah. You're young enough to remember when Bermudian ladies couldn't work in the King Edward. They trained at the Cottage Hospital and there they worked. How far you think they've come now? Oh, it's, well, it's, it's remarkable because as you know, they've become matrons and administrators in the whole nine yards. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a quantum leap, you know, a quantum leap. And as I remember, because uh, Lofty and I held the, held the ribbon that the governor, uh, Sir Julian Gascoigne, had cut to f for the for the what the old hospital, which was the new hospital back then, and um, Dr. James came shortly after that. So wow, everybody it was a it was like a, a celebration because uh, somebody of color was going to be you know uh, and a master surgeon at that you know, and I remember the there was a Mr. Lambert from Somerset he. Dr. James had performed this uh, heart, not a heart, but a, a, the, the first pacemaker and it was a battery, like a, like a six-volt battery they had on the side. And this man was on, like, on one of the general wards, but remarkable to see the, that was back in the 60s, you know, and what they've done since then, you know. So, so now, we're, now we're 2014. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's gone to a whole new level, you know. It, well, medicine has moved to a, a, a really grand level right, right now. Now, what do you think will happen to these photographs, say, when the acute care wing is finished? They should, they should put a, uh, have a special section where they put them so that people can relate to it, you know, like almost like, um, like, this, like names on plaques, you know, where people get accolades for their the service. When Dr. Alden Harvey established the Cottage Hospital in 1928, I reckon even he never thought we would be at this point. The Bermuda Hospitals Board tells us that this is our hospital. Milton Hill and all the people you see in these lovely old pictures help to confirm that. Here at the Bermuda Society of Arts for People and Places, I'm Charles Webb, VSB News.
People and Places with Charles Webb has been brought to you by Big Saving Zone at the end of Stocks Road, St. David's. Now at Big Saving Zone, there's the Kid Zone. See the latest bedroom ideas for tots to teens. There's a large selection of beds, bedding, all kind of furniture designed especially in mind for your child. And see the array of accessories for all ages. Big Saving Zone is the home of Ashley Furniture and certain mattresses in Bermuda. And the Kid Zone is only at Big Saving Zone at the end of Stocks Road, St. David's. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the sports report with Earl Basin. It was medals, medals, medals. Highlighting the weekend in sports with a total of 18 coming in just two of them. The Caribbean Island Swimming Championships is taking place in Barbados and Bermuda has been on the podium a total of 14 times. Julian Fletcher won a silver medal in the boys 18 and over 50 meter breaststroke with a time of 30-38. Fletcher then set a new Bermuda and CISC record on his way to winning gold in the boys 18 and over 200 meter breaststroke final when he touched the wall in a time of 2.22.71. Fletcher's time eclipsed an 11 year old record that was set back in 1993 by Chris Fluke. Lisa Blackburn Clock, 34.57 on her way to winning the bronze medal in the girls 18 and over 50 meter breaststroke. Blackburn won the bronze medal clocking 27.76 during the girls 18 and over 50 meter freestyle. She also won a bronze medal during the 100 meter butterfly. Shannon Hassel won the 13 to 14 girls 200 meter backstroke gold medal with a time of 2.30.57. Hassel's time is a personal best and a new Bermuda record. Hassel also won the 13 to 14 girls 50 meter backstroke bronze medal, clocking a time of 32.35, which qualified her for the Canadian Age Group Championships. Rebecca Halliger captured a silver medal during the girls 18 and over 50 meter freestyle final, clocking a time of 27 seconds flat. She went on to win a bronze medal in the girls 18 and over 50 meter backstroke with a time of 31.62. She also captured the bronze medal during the 100 meter butterfly final, missing out on the national record by three hundredths of a second. Ethan Daly won a bronze medal clocking 32.28 in the 11 to 12 boys 50 meter backstroke, while Jesse Washington won a silver medal in the 13 to 14 boys 50 meter backstroke. He clocked a time of 28.82. Washington's time of 28.63 during the preliminaries saw him set a new 13 to 14 boys 50 meter backstroke Bermuda record. He also won a gold medal competing in the 200 meter freestyle. Ashley Arby captured a silver medal when she clocked a time of 2.17.49 in the girls 11 to 12 200 meter freestyle race. And then over in Mexico in track and field, four medals were returned to Bermuda. Led by Kyra Stratus, she captured gold on the 14 to 17 girls 800 meter junior B race, clocking a time of 214 flat. She also captured gold in the girls 14 to 17 400 meter dash with a new personal best time of 5585. Janai Parenti captured a bronze medal competing in the 14 to 17 boys high jump with a top leap of 2.02 meters. And Kyle Webb picked up a bronze medal in the 18 to 19 boys 100 meter final, clocking a time of 10.55. The first round of the Western County Cup competition took place at the Southampton Oval and saw Southampton Rangers retain their title with a seven wicket victory over Warwick Workman's Club. Batting first challengers, Warwick Workman's were bowled all out for 77. Lionel Cairn was the top scorer with 34, while guest player Jordan De Silva added 17. The Unstubble destroyed the Warwick Backman, returning figures of 8.3 overs, seven maidens, six wickets for four runs. In reply, Southampton Rangers scored 81 for three in 15.5 overs. Alex Doerr was the top scorer with 31 not out. Stubble chipped in with 22 not out. Alan Douglas Jr. was the pick of the Warwick Workman's Club bowlers with figures of seven overs, one maiden, two for 31. The 2014 Junior National Golf Championships came to an end at Belmont Hills with Corey De Silva crowned the 2014 national champion, defeating Michael Ming one up after the 36 hole title match. Sam Waymire defeated Joe Waters in the 18-hole final, 7-6 to take the championship consolation title. Kenny Lejure defeated Tyler Emery to take the open flight division title. I'm Earl Based in reporting for VSB Sports.
to do it. Enjoy your new shower. Experience the bold look of Kohler at a Kohler registered showroom. Outlast any storm with the most advanced alkaline battery. This weather segment is brought to you by Duracell Quantum. Well, a hot and humid Monday and more on the way. I'm Jay Barker and this is your weather. Let's take a look at our weather shot for today and it looked like David Patterson had more fun than I did today. Uh, this shot taken at 1245 over Port Royal Golf Course. I guess he got to go out and be in that uh, beautiful weather. It's a little hot for golf to be completely honest, but I don't think I'd mind. This is a great shot. You see the water off in the distance, blue skies, some clouds, a little bit of wind, but just generally hot and humid. Thanks to David Patterson for sending that in. Our highs and lows for today are high, only 84 degrees, 2 p.m. this afternoon. Our low temperature, 77 degrees at 12 a.m. Currently, we're looking at 80 degrees. Humidity is 75 percent. Winds out of the south-southwest at 9 knots, and the barometri barometric pressure is rising at 30.24 inches. Our rainfall index, well, nothing for today. The month total, 0.65 of an inch. Our total for the year, 27.29 inches. Again, we're off of that normal of 27.7 inches we'd normally have seen. So, rain, we need you. Come on back. Let's take a look at our satellite map. Now, that's, you can see this Bermuda Azores high is going to create this ridge of uh, high pressure right across our south with warm and humid weather and just an isolated shower or two. And you can see this fair amount of cloud cover over here on the east coast. Will that get our way? But it looks like it's going to be pushed up and over us this week. And the gateway cities in Atlanta will be 89 degrees and partly cloudy, 91 and partly cloudy in Boston, partly cloudy and 93 in Charlotte. London, light rain in 72. Thunderstorms are likely in 89 degrees in Miami. North New York, partly cloudy in 91 degrees. 93 in Orlando and mostly cloudy. Philadelphia, partly cloudy in 94 degrees. 77 in light rain in Toronto and in Washington, 93 degrees and partly cloudy. For tonight, we're looking at a low temperature of around 76, partly cloudy. Winds out of the southwest at 8 to 12 knots. For tomorrow, 85 degrees is your high temperature. Some clouds, late afternoon shower, possible towards the east. And you're looking at winds out of the south-southwest at 8 to 12 knots. For Mariners tonight, there are no small craft warnings in effect. Seas inside the reef, 1 foot. Seas outside the reef, 2 to 4 feet. Your sea temperature, 81 degrees. For tomorrow, we're looking at a sea inside the reef of 1 feet. Seas outside the reef, 2 to 4 feet. No warnings in effect. High tide will be at 5.13 a.m. Low tide at 11.22 a.m. Let's take a look at our five-day forecast. Well, like I said, it's going to look a little similar, to be honest. When, uh, Tuesday, some clouds, a late afternoon shower, high of 85. Wednesday, partly cloudy, high of 85. Thursday, mix of sun and clouds, which is a, just another way of saying partly cloudy, high of 84. Friday, partly cloudy, high of 85. And on Saturday, partly cloudy, maybe a brief shower, high of 84. I'd like to thank the Bermuda Weather Service for all their help. And here's your bad joke of the day. What do you call a can opener that doesn't work? A can't opener, huh? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> That's it for me. Enjoy your night. Outlast any storm with the most advanced alkaline battery. Today's weather forecast was brought to you by Duracell Quantum. It's a beautiful morning. Hear Keeble the Captain Burgess on Mix 106 FM weekday mornings, 6.30 to 11.30. Great music, features, and your requests. It's a beautiful And we thank you for choosing to spend your evening with us at VSB TV 11. Have a great rest of week. Good night, Bermuda. Outfit for Che Barker, provided by Alexander at the English Sports Shop. VSB, TV11, Bermuda.